Grumpf and Girdle. This is the story of Grumpf and Girdle. Grumpf is a strange creature. The first thing you notice about him is his hairy hair. His face is hairy, his neck is hairy, his arms are hairy, his chest is hairy, and his legs are hairy. This in itself isn't very unusual, for many of the people in the land of Winkle are hairy. Not as hairy as Grumpf, mind you. In fact, most people preferred to be called fuzzy. Grumpf was unusual, though, even in the land of Winkle, which is on the edge of a big pond. Now, most people who lived near the pond were hunters. Some people hunted fish. Some people hunted frogs. Some people hunted beavers. Some people hunted dragonflies, and still others actually hunted swans. Grumpf didn't like hunting. Grumpf wanted to be a poet. Often the other people asked Grumpf what he did for a living. He would tell them he was a poet. People said this was very fine, but what did he hunt? When Grumpf said he didn't hunt anything, they asked him how he got his bones. When Grumpf said he didn't have any bones, the other people quickly walked away. You see, they were afraid that Grumpf would ask them for some of their bones. The truth was, Grumpf didn't really want any bones. People said this was because he was lazy. This hurt Grumpf, but he tried not to show it. See, Grumpf liked people and wanted people to like him. But every day, all the other people went hunting, and Grumpf went alone down to the edge of the pond. There he would lie in the sun and smoke bulrushes. Grumpf didn't like hunting. Grumpf wanted to be a poet. Often the other people asked Grumpf what he did for a living. He would tell them he was a poet. People said this was very fine, but what did he hunt? When Grumpf said he didn't hunt anything, they asked him how he got his bones. When Grumpf said he didn't have any bones, other people quickly walked away. You see, they were afraid that Grumpf would ask them for some of their bones. Truth was, Grumpf didn't really want any bones. People said this was because he was lazy. This hurt Grumpf, but he tried not to show it. You see, Grumpf liked people and wanted people to like him, but every day all the other people went hunting and Grumpf went alone down to the edge of the pond. Here he would lie in the sun and smoke bulrushes while talking to his friends, the frogs and swans. Now, smoking bulrushes was against the rules. People knew instinctively once you started smoking bulrushes, you stopped hunting. Once you stopped hunting, you didn't get any more bones. There's a rule in the land of Winkle that everybody collected as many bones as possible. The more bones you had, the more friends you had, the more people respected you. Since Grump didn't have any bones, he didn't have many people friends either. Fortunately, he had a lot of animal friends. You see, they liked Grump very much because he didn't hunt them like the other people. Every day, Grump hid in the tall grass and talked to his animal friends while smoking bulrushes. Since he was a poet, he spoke to them in poems like this. Frog, frog, on the log, have you seen the puppy dog? Now, some of the bulrushes were stronger than other bulrushes, and if they're strong enough, the frog would answer him thus. Croak, croak, have a toke, they tied him up with a rope. Now, Grumpf was happy with his friends, the frogs, the swans, and tadpoles. He didn't have a wife like other men, but this was because he didn't have any bones. You see, in the land of Winkle, a wife cost many bones, and poor Grumpf didn't have any. Still, he was happy with his lot, lying in the tall grass, until he saw a girl bathing in the pond. Now, the girl didn't see him, and since Grumpf was rather shy, he didn't speak to her, but remained hidden in the tall grass. Up to this time, Grump thought the most beautiful thing he ever saw were the wings of the dragonfly. But this girl was even more beautiful than that. She had long brown hair, and her skin was dazzling white. Grump came under her spell. He wanted to speak to her, but he was tongue-tied, which is rather unusual for Grump, seeing as he was a poet. He wanted to know her name and decided to ask the dove. Dove, dove, flying above, what's the name of the girl I love? Now, the dove knew her name, but wouldn't tell him, because the dove knew it was hopeless for Grumpf to fall in love, because he didn't have any bones. No girl would go out with a bone unless 
boy unless he gave her many bones. Now Grump should have known better, but he was in love and there wasn't any help for it. Funny thing about love is it's much easier to fall into love than it is to fall out of it. In any case, Grump was very sad to leave, see her leave. All day he walked around the pond asking the animals if they knew her name. The muskrat wouldn't tell them and neither would the mole. You see, the animals were afraid that if he loved this girl he would want to marry her and might even become a hunter to give her bones. Finally, the turtle took pity on him. Erk, erk, my name's Turtle. Erk, erk, her name's Girdle. Girdle, what a beautiful name. You have to admit it sounds a lot prettier than Grumpf, doesn't it? Well, that's because Girdle is a girl's name and Grumpf is a boy's name, and we all know that girls are prettier than boys. The animals did their best to cheer Grumpf up, but it was no use. He didn't laugh anymore. He didn't joke anymore. All he did was lie on his back and stare at the clouds, and guess whose face he saw in the clouds? That's right, Girdle's. Even when the sun went down, the sky turned black. Even when the stars came out, they formed an outline of her face. Now all the animals felt very sorry for Grumpf. They sat in a circle around his bed of moonbeam and asked if they could help. Swan, swan, gentle fawn, bring my love to me this dawn. You know that's exactly what they did. When Girdle went to the pond to bathe in the morning, the snapping turtle swam up behind her and started nibbling at her toes. Poor Girdle, how she splashed and screamed for help. At that very moment, the swan glided by and urged her to climb upon his back. Girdle was a little frightened because she had never met a talking swan before, but she was even more frightened of the snapping turtle and climbed upon the swan's back. The swan took her immediately to where Grump was hiding in the tall grass. Grump said, Pretty maid with eyes so fine, come lie with me to pass the time. Girdle replied, Oh, please, kind sir, with friends so true, first give me your name so I might know you. Grump said, My name's Grump, your name's Girdle, this is Swan, and this is Turtle. Having been introduced, Girdle felt more at ease. She was curious about this young man who spent his days speaking rhymes to animals instead of going hunting with the other men. She was curious, too, about the animals she had never heard of speaking to people. She had heard about bulrushes, of course, in school, and how dangerous it was to smoke them. Grumpf told her he didn't hunt animals because they were his friends. She wondered where he got his bones. He said he didn't have any bones. Now, this was unbelievable to poor Girdle. Everybody collected bones. Her father wasn't a rich man, but he had an average number of bones. There are blue bones, red bones, green bones. What good is a bone, Grumpf asked. Well, if you had enough bones, you can buy a house or a motorboat. True, Grump said sadly. He pointed out the animals were getting scarcer and scarcer. The land of Winkle was prosperous, but the animals were gradually disappearing, because people hunted and killed not only enough for them to eat, but as many as possible so they could put bones in the bank. Those with enough bones bought, brought, bought motorboats. This enabled them to hunt more animals and get more bones, but the noise of their engines were driving away the birds, and the gasoline leaking from their motors was poisoning the pond. All the animals nodded in agreement with Grump. It's true, said the otter, whose brothers and sisters were all caught by the people of Winkle and made into bones. Sooner or later, he pointed out, all the animals would be gone. The people wouldn't even have food to eat, and of course, no more bones. Then the people would have to eat each other, and soon the land of Winkle would be void of all living creatures, and only the pile of bones would remain as a permanent reminder of the folly of men. This upset poor Girdle, and she started to cry. This made Grump and the animals ashamed, because they didn't want Girdle to cry, but only wanted to explain to her why Grump didn't have any bones. Grump stroked her hand to soothe her, and the hummingbirds hovered near her cheeks. The wind from their wings soon dried Girdle's tears. This upset poor Girdle and she started to cry. 
This made Grumpf and the animals ashamed, because they didn't want Girdle to cry, but only wanted to explain to her why Grumpf didn't have any bones. Grumpf stroked her hand to soothe her, and the hummingbirds hovered near her cheeks. The wind from their wings soon dried Girdle's tears. Listen, said a squirrel, I have an idea. Let's have a picnic. All the other animals thought this was a good idea, too. They left Grumpf and Girdle holding each other in the tall grass and searched for food. The squirrel came back with nuts, and the birds brought them cherries. Each animal brought a different kind of food. All the animals agreed it was the best picnic they ever had. At the end of the day, they declared Grumpf to be the prince of animals, and declared Girdle was their princess. All the animals agreed. At night, Girdle had to go back to the village, because she lived with her mother and father. But every morning, she would come back to the tall grass and reeds. There Grumpf would be waiting for her, and they would smoke bulrushes and play together all day. Girdle quickly became loved by the animals. She was very kind and compassionate. If any of the animals got a thorn in their foot, then they would come to Girdle, who would pull it out. If any of the animals broke a limb, Girdle would make a cast out of mud and bind it together with reeds. It was hard to tell which person the animals loved the most, for although Grumpf had been their friend for a long time, and Girdle for only a short time, they loved both of them equally well. Grumpf was happier than he had ever been in his life, for he was in love and had found himself a wife. Girdle became prettier and prettier because she loved Grumpf as well. One day they decided to let all the people of the land of Winkle know they were married. This proved to be a mistake. As soon as Girdle's parents knew they were about to be married, they wanted to meet Grumpf. Now Grumpf was willing to meet them because Grumpf loved her parents very much, because Girdle loved her parents very much, and Grumpf was even willing not to tell them they were wrong to hunt animals to collect bones. From previous experience, Grumpf knew that the people of the Lion of Winkle got very angry when he told them this. But alas, Girdle's parents didn't like Grumpf. First of all, Grumpf was hairy, while other men were only fuzzy. Secondly, Grumpf broke smoked bulrushes, which was against the rule in the land of Winkle. Now even these two first two faults would have been forgiven if Grumpf had a lot of bones, but when Girdle's parents found out he didn't even have one bone, they told Girdle she shouldn't see Grumpf again. Girdle didn't mind the fact that Grumpf was hairy. In fact, she thought it was rather cute. And Girdle smoked bulrushes herself, so she knew that smoking bulrushes wasn't really a bad thing to do. But her parents and all her friends had bones, and Girdle wanted bones too, so she could be like all the other people. Besides, people laughed at Grumpf because he didn't have any bones. Now Girdle still came to see Grumpf because she loved him, and she loved the animals too, but she wouldn't marry Grumpf unless he got some bones. Poor Grumpf. You see, Grumpf loved Girdle so very much that he would do anything in his power to make her happy. He even cut his hair and became fuzzy like all the other people, but this wasn't enough. The important thing was that Grumpf was a poet and wouldn't go hunting with the other men. If he wouldn't hunt, he couldn't get any bones. Now sometimes men would give him a bone for writing a poem. Poor Grumpf worked very hard, wrote many poems, but he still got very few bones, not nearly enough bones to marry Girdle. As he tried to find a way of getting bones without hunting, but as everybody told him, the only way to get bones was to go hunting with other men. One day Girdle never came to the tall grass where Grumpf was waiting for her. This was a very sad day for Grumpf and all the other animals. Grumpf even cried. Now men aren't supposed to cry, but this was a rule. This was a rule of the land of Winkle. But Grumpf broke so many rules that one more didn't really matter. Besides, Grumpf was a poet, and poets have a little leeway in breaking rules, like no crying. But Grumpf cried so hard, so long, he actually raised the level of the pond. Now, all the animals tried to console Grumpf, but it wasn't any good. You see, Grumpf loved the animals very much, but none of the animals was the least bit like Girdle. There are two possible ways to end this story. The first possibility is that Grumpf becomes fuzzy like all the other men, quits smoking bulrushes, and becomes a hunter. If Grumpf did this, there would be no one left to tell the people of the land of Winkle that hunting animals and collecting bones was wrong. Besides, Grumpf could never talk to the animals with poems again. Second possibility is that the people of the land of Winkle give up hunting and collecting bones and become poets like Grumpf. Now, this isn't very likely, even if all the people in the land of Winkle smoked bulrushes. Number ones and number twos, which of the endings would you choose? Actually, there's a third possibility. 
Normally this wouldn't be permitted since it breaks a rule of the land of Winkle that any story can only have two possible endings. But then again, this isn't really a story, it's a fairy tale. And in a fairy tale, anything is possible. What happens in this fairy tale is that all the frogs collect old bulrushes and bring them to Grump who, with the help of the beaver, builds a raft. Then two doves fly in the village that night and tap with their beaks on Girdle's window pane. They give her a poem from Grump. Girdle, my friend, come see me again. With a raft of fronds, we'll sail the pond and follow a breeze to the land of the free. Seeing as this is a fairy tale, Girdle decides to accept. And Girdle and Grump, sitting hand in hand on the raft of bulrushes, are towed by the swans clear across the pond, where the water is fresh and clean, and motor boats and hunters have never been. The End